at ASCO 2023, we are seeing very important and interesting data for population of patients with non-small cell lung cancer in the advanced stage. One is the Chrysalis II for the population of patients with EGFR mutated non-small cell lung cancer who were progressing on osimertinib and then included in the study by the use of amivantamab and lazertinib. The second study is in the population of patients so with KRAS mutated non-small cell lung cancer is the code break 200 with analysis dedicated into biomarkers. Further, in the neoadjuvant setting, we have seen the results of the phase two study with the use of osimertinib neoadjuvant in a population of patients with 27 patients, small number, but very interesting data to understand about more in terms of heterogeneity of cancer. At ASCO 2023, we have seen the results of the combination amivantamab and lazertinib from the Trisalis two study cohort D. This is the group of patients who have previously received osimertinib and became resistant to be included into the study. What is interesting is that in this presentation, a biomarker to select and to understand who are the responders to this combination have been presented. The presence of MET positivity as defined by three plus in more than 25% of tumor cells have shown that response rate that was previously in general by 36% can be achieved now in 61% if we completely and clearly define the population of patients. And this is true because as well in the population of patients that are MET negative, the response rate become very, very low. So the clear message of this study is that if we can select for MET positivity, we can finally decide in which population of patients response rate with a combination of amirantamab and lazaritinib can reach to the response rate of 60%. At ASCO 2023, we have seen the results of code Bay 200, looking particularly at biomarkers. The question of this part of the study was to understand the response of sotorazib versus tocetaxel in patients with co-alteration, namely P53, P1, STK11, and PDL1. Sotorazib outperformed compared to tocetaxel, independent of PDL1 expression or co-alterations of the above mentioned genes. What is also very much of interest is that there is a group of patients where sotorazib is not outperforming docetaxel, which is in the presence of co-alterations of KRAS. So in this group of patients, in conclusion, we might consider the use of docetaxel. However, sotorazib in the presence of all other alterations has a consistent clinical response superior to docetaxel. At ASCO 2023, we have seen the results of the phase two neoadivan trial with osimertinib for surgically resectable EGFR mutated non-small cell lung cancer. What is interesting is that this study had as a primary endpoint major pathologic response of 50%. A very small number of patients have been included, 27 patients, to receive one to two months of osimertinib and then resection. The major pathologic response was shown to be achieved, however, only in 15% of patients. These results open several questions to be explored in, uh, in the lab. And one of the possible answers has been already described by the authors, with the presence of loss of RBM10 that can lead to no response, so which means to resistance to osimertinib. So the question is, in conclusion, what is happening, what is occurring that leads to this resistance? Probably is heterogeneity and other alterations to be explored in the lab. Mm -hmm.